In this course, I will attempt to cover every aspect of Moodle 2 for teachers and assume that you've not encountered Moodle before. For those who know Moodle already, you'll realise that this coverage is a pretty tall order. And for those who don't, please don't be daunted by the comment. We should all appreciate a challenge. Using Moodle should be a very rewarding experience, and once you get used to the style of operation, fairly easy to use. There are a lot of elements inside Moodle that will be familiar, and some that may require new skills. Many are transferable to elsewhere on the web. Either way, a thorough grounding in the understanding of how Moodle works is vital if you are to use it effectively and creatively. So what is Moodle? The homepage of Moodle is moodle.org, where Moodle is described with no less than three acronyms. A CMS, a course management system, an LMS, a learning management system, and a VLE, a virtual learning environment. But do not be discouraged, as the homepage also contains three other words, free, community, and support. Don't be put off by the price tag as free, as there is no catch. This is a genuine offer on the internet, and in this instance does not mean cut price. Moodle is a software package that can be downloaded and installed for free, but has developed into arguably one of the most powerful CMS, LMS, VLEs available today. And there's more. It is what is known as open source. The code is available to you. So, if it does not do what you want it to do, then you can change it so it does. If you're not a programmer, then don't worry. There are many teachers and others out there who are. Tens of thousands of them all around the world, and they are devoted. I've met many, and they are developing Moodle far faster than any commercial providers can for paid-for software. But don't feel left out. You can join in and make suggestions, test code, and help others. Another part of Moodle's power is that it's based on international standards and not constrained by proprietary systems. Everyone can work together with a common understanding and agreement, forcing down costs whilst increasing performance. This is a side lesson for your students too, in the world they're moving into. Since its beginning in 1999, Australian creator Martin Dugiamas has seen the use grow to cover the world in over 220 countries, 90 languages, and has been installed at over 70,000 sites with more than 45 million students. And those are only the sites that have officially registered. The original push for Moodle came with his work combining his programming talents and his teaching skills. The design of Moodle was founded on the firm educational principle called Social Constructionist Pedagogy. Briefly, this combines individuals as groups, who jointly learn through their mutual experience, although Moodle, as we should see, can be flexibly adapted to a wide range of situations, from primary schools to universities. It embraces all of the tools the web can offer, and like any basic assembly kit, is only limited by your creativity. Moodle is onomatopoeic, and maybe a verb. Its entomology is unknown, but has been variously described as the process of lazily meandering through something, doing things as they occur, or an enjoyable tinkering that may lead to insight and creativity. Either way, the techie geeks got hold of it and produced another acronym, the Modular Object-Oriented Dynamic Learning Environment. But don't be frightened of the technology. Nowhere is it claimed that e-learning is an educational panacea, it's just one of the tools in the box. To be critical of Moodle, it's just a list generator, allowing teachers to group links of activities and resources in the same dry way as search engines do. There must be a better, more intelligent and interactive method, and I'm confident they will arrive, but until then, it's easier to be critical than correct. So the basis of Moodle is a flexible list generator, but it can take many guises. All of these sites are Moodle, and if you want to visit the site of a wonderful techie developer, pop over to see Moodle man, Mr. Julian Ridden. He has lots of good templates and will design one for you. Strip away all the hype and fancy front ends, and you're left with a collection of managed lists and blocks. That is what we're going to do here in this course. Strip Moodle down to its bare bones, so that you can see where the plethora of potentially confusing pages come from. We are going to use the vanilla, out-of-the-box Moodle and develop it into a full site. Everything will be so much easier once you can identify the component elements. You should then see that Moodle is a group list of activities and resources backed by excellent organisation with solid analysis and reporting functions. So why didn't I say that at the beginning? Sorry, hobby horses well and truly stabled. Let's move on. A phrase that will be repeated many times in this course will involve Moodle's flexibility. Part of the success of Moodle is its configurability. It has been successfully installed in small primary schools right through to the Open University. In this section, we will examine the structure of the management behind Moodle. There are seven default levels of management, and these can be increased should you require, but most sites will amalgamate these into fewer levels to suit the individual requirements of your application. Viewers who chance upon your site or search it out are known as guests. 
Whatever role you play, remember these guests could be your future students or parents' guardians of future students. They may even be the dreaded inspector. So consider carefully how your contribution is seen by the outside world as guest. Once users have logged in, they fall under the general heading of authenticated users. They will see a modified homepage for your site with a deeper insight into its contents. As they are authenticated, they are registered with your system, which now controls their abilities within the system. The most common authenticated user is likely to be the student. The student becomes a student by joining one or more courses on the site. Next up the capability hierarchy is the non-editing teacher. As the title suggests, this teacher can teach in courses and grade student work, but not alter the teaching material. The teacher can do anything within his or her course or courses, including changing the structure, the teaching material and the grading schemes. The course creator is again a clearly defined heading describing the next level of capability. Above the course creator is the manager. The manager sits at a departmental level, generating staff and student accounts and providing the hierarchy of staff with their relevant capabilities. Finally, there's the systems administrator. This is the individual or team who implement all of the ICT support for the complete site, ensuring your site is presented well through a selection of themes and running smoothly from a technical point of view. The systems administrator can also enable direct links into other Moodles to combine sites and access to hubs. This video has included a brief introduction to Moodle, what it is and where it came from, mixed with a scattering of acronyms and a quick glance at the wonderful world of open source. The community bias in Moodle is one of its key strengths, coupled to the adherence to international standards and its chameleon-like flexibility. Here we are stripping Moodle down to its essential elements and using a personalised vanilla site to construct a course inside a Moodle site. We have looked at the management structure of Moodle and seen the levels of control that may be employed to spread the load of implementation. Whether you are the Open University or a peripatetic teacher, Moodle employs some simple tools to allow you to control powerful web-based features to customise your learning environment. In the next video, we will log onto your desktop and take a tour of some of the basic features Moodle offers. Let's move on.